Before we get started with the podcast, I want you all to go check out You Grow Girl. That's Grow, G-R-O-W, written by a dear friend of mine, Jay Smith. It's for daily affirmations for black women. It is filled with beautiful, colorful images of black women and powerful affirmations. You can find it at Amazon at Amazon.com. This is Red Zone in the Lab podcast. This is Dion Deuce Blackney. We're back after a couple months off. We kind of took a spring break. We was kind of hitting it real high since November, but we're back at it. This is 2022 NFL Draft Week. We're going to have a a few guests this week come on. Uh, Today's guest is going to be Chris Miles. He's our Dallas Cowboys correspondent. Um, That's what I'm calling. He's a fan. Of course, Michael Metcalf Evans is going to join us. A Baltimore Ravens correspondent. He's also a fan. So he's going to join us um, and talk to us about, you know, their, the Cowboys and the Ravens draft plans, uh, the state of their teams and what they're looking for them to do uh, the rest of the offseason. Um, I think one thing for the Cowboys that's going to really be interesting to see what they do is they're going to take, you know, the flashy player or is they going to take a player of need? When I think of play of need for the Cowboys, I'm thinking cornerback. But a flashy player, you know, might be a wide receiver, one of the, the top wide receivers if they fall. The Ravens, I think the Ravens need to show up that defensive line, maybe a good edge rusher. Uh, but who knows? They might need to go O-line, uh, you know, to protect Lamar because we know Lamar, he, he, you know, he looks like a scrambling quarterback, but he's really not. The reason why – I believe that he scrambles a lot because the protection breaks down. So that's what those guys were going to kind of talk to us about the day, the state of their teams in the draft. We appreciate you joining us all week. This is Red Zone and Lab Podcast. This is Dion Deuce Black. I'm Christian Miles, native Washingtonian and real estate agent servicing the Washington metropolitan area. I started my career as an investor and later transitioned to the residential side. I really wanted to leave the investor side because I wanted to connect with people. Building relationships is important to me. I understand the buying and selling process can be challenging. I get it. I've been there. I'm a mom, wife, friend, and neighbor. I absolutely love helping families and connecting with people. Going through the home buying and selling process is stressful enough. When working with me, I make it fun. As a realtor, I think it's important to be able to connect with you. Every detail is important no matter how small. Let me take care of the heavy lifting while you focus on the joys of finding a new home. Something I live by, people may not remember what you said, but they will always remember how you made them feel. With me, it's an experience. Come back to Red Zone in the lab with Deuce. It's draft time. Who you got? We're back draft week. We're back with our guest, our Cowboys correspondent, Chris Miles is back. We appreciate you coming back with us, spending some time with us for this draft week to, to talk about, you know, um, what you think the Cowboys are going to do. Um, so let's, let's just start first. Let's kind of start with the remarks today, which is kind of like a quarters off, uh, you know, quarters by surprise during the Cowboys press conference. And they asked Jerry Jones, you know, who has the final say on the draft, who makes the final decision. His comment was, well, Stephen Jones, he chose Taco and um, I chose Micah. So that was like a kind of like a slap. 
yeah, and, uh, yeah. not too long ago, Taco posted like a crying type, um, like a, a crying mm-hmm. gif uh, on Twitter. So, I mean, w- what do you think about that? And when it comes to the final decisions that's being made for the Dallas Cowboys as far as selections? Um, I feel like it was some truth to that. And it shows a lot of insight um, to the decisions and what us as fans see about the decisions that we may not like that that, that are made. Um, and I, I think it's true. I, I got a feeling that, you know, Jerry is in the process of trying to pass the mantle on full time. Of course, Jerry ain't getting no younger. I think Jerry mm-hmm. is in his 70s or 80s. Me possibly yeah you know what i'm saying so he, he's somewhere up there so you know jury in the process of trying to trying to pass the mantle over so when his time comes to be done you know to believe in in stephen jones capability um taco charlton is a prime example he was a he was a bust with us mm-hmm. he left us went to i think kansas city after us um or well, he might have had a stint in Miami, I'm not sure, but I know he went to Kansas City, and then the last couple of seasons he was with uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, I know some people might not know that, but he was with Pittsburgh the last couple of seasons. Um, of course, as a backup, not a starter, but you know, I think uh, I think we got him as like a first round pick. Yeah, he was. Uh, yep. So you know, and he didn't work out for us, right. as though you know Jerry Jones pick. He picked Michael Parsons. You know. <laughs> Defensive What's player, the- rookie, defensive rookie of the year, and and he was in running for defensive player of the year. So that just shows the caliber of player that the between the two of what they pick. Mm-hmm. Um. So I firm, I mean, I firmly believe that you know Stephen Jones is 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 part of the reason for a lot of our miscues when it comes to free agency and losing quality players. What's the state of the Cowboys right now? Oh, man, State of the Cowboys is we're in an offensive rebuilding stage, it seems like. Um, An overhaul of the receiver room. Uh, I necessarily don't understand why, but, you know, I guess at the end of the day, NFL boils down to money, money management. You know, if the front office feels as though $20 million can be spent elsewhere, on a on a receiver that is less injury prone, possible, you know, but all receivers ain't putting up a thousand yards. And arguably one of the top five route runners in the league. So, you know, the values, you know, the value the values change, you know, when it comes to money. Are you satisfied um, with the offseason? They did too much. You think they needed to do more? Where are you at so far? Um, I'm I'm not satisfied with the offseason. Um, and I'm gonna tell you why. We lost Randy Gregory, and you know, even with all his struggles to begin his career, I love the player that Randy Gregory was. He gave our defense some intensity coming off the edge. His sack numbers might not represent it, but again, I've said it in previous podcasts before. A player's production is not always based off of sack numbers. It's about being disruptive, especially right. when you're on the defensive line. And he wasn't the Marcus Lawrence, but Randy Gregory will wreck house. And a lot of the plays from this past season for the defense, it was Randy Gregory wrecking house. Somebody else might have made the play, but a lot of times Randy Gregory, when he came, when he was ready and he came back from his injury, he was wrecking house. Um, I'm not satisfied with the fact that we lost Amari Cooper. Like I said before, CD is a phenomenal receiver. He's going to be great. He's he's building. I just don't see him being ready as of yet to be the number one guy. You know, uh, we 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 lost some players. We gained some players. So. You know, I, I wish we would have did a little bit more as far as on a defensive end, um, showing up a, another safety. Um, you have Tyron Matthews still out there. Right now you got Earl Thomas talking about he want to come back and mm-hmm. play. Um, so there's some options still out there. I just I just need us to make make some moves. 
So you speaking know? of defense, what do you think? What what would you do with the twenty fourth pick if it kind of fell um, the way you wanted it to fall? And what do you actually think that Jerry and Steven is going to do with the twenty fourth pick? Twenty fourth pick, I would say a corner or a safety. Okay. Um, continue to continue to build that defense. Um, you can you can you can get a DN. I mean a DN or D tackle, whatever you need as far as D line goes. Um, probably another linebacker. You can get those in later rounds. Um, but twenty fourth pick, if a, if a available, the best corner, you know, whatever whatever the best corner or safety might be, I would take it. Um, knowing jury, if a receiver is available, like Chris Chris Olavier from a from a Ohio State, you know, I'm pretty sure they'll snatch him. Because you know? <laughs> I mean, we still do need a receiver. Need we still have a need for a receiver? But I think, uh, yeah, because what's, what's, what's Gallup's timetable? I mean, he's looking at within season, right? Yeah, he's looking at within season. Right now, they say he's on track. His rehab is going going well. Um, so I, I think I think we would probably be looking at an October return date. You know, that's that's my best estimate um, timetable for, you know, when he got hurt versus, you know, the timetable for the season. Um, so, yeah, it's all it's all about his healing process. Of, and when he's able to get going and get mobile again and see how his body reacts. Yeah, because these days, the ACL, you know, technology and all those things yeah. is not as I mean, shoot, back in the 80s, ACL was career ending. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. Now, especially it's kind of started with Adrian Peterson, right? Right. Um, how he came back. So now, I mean, shoot, ACL went from career ending to a year to like six months. Yeah. Um, the yeah, guy absolutely. from um, Alabama, Jamison Williams, I mean, he's already doing like high knees and all that. And it's only been like three months. So um, for the rest of the draft, where do you all need feel, feels and like where do you need to kind of bulk up the, the depth? Um, with draft picks and are you actually looking for another other than safety and corner is there another style of caliber pick that you um, look that you may want to add someone that actually can come in and contribute day one um so we need a we, we definitely need a run stopper in the middle of the defense um well, I forgot the guy's name number 99 from Georgia Jordan you know if he's, if he's on if he's on the table I say go for it. <laughs> Jordan Davis, you know, he, yeah. He is a dog in mm-hmm. the middle of that defense. Um, we definitely need to re- start to think about revamping our offensive line. Um, we let Connor Williams, um, who's the starting uh, left guard, we let him go on down to Miami and take his services elsewhere. Um, Tyron Smith, of course, you know, he's always had an injury uh situation every year so we need to start thinking about you know the future as far as the left mm-hmm. tackle um again we let go leo collins our starting right tackle um and replace of uh, turn steel having a faith in turn steel turn steel played phenomenal for us last year but we still have to have consistency and continue that so with that being said him going into a full-time role you know you can't hold up we need to have an, uh, the next man up ready to go, and the depth of what we already have, it's it's not Stalin caliber. So we need to solidify some people on that on that offensive line um, that's ready to go. So what would what what uh, at the end of the draft, um, after the last pick, to you, what will be a successful draft for the Cowboys? Uh, the successful drafts for, for the Cowboys, I see primarily defense. Um, but definitely, like I said, show up some, some potential starting caliber players for the offensive line. Um, you can definitely look into, uh, a backup running back, another backup running back. Cause I don't know what the state of Corey Clement will be, um, coming this season. Uh, I know, that uh, Tony Pollard is in contract year, so we could possibly lose him after this year if we don't show him up, mm-hmm. you know, and give him the role or the money that he's looking for, he's going to be looking for. Um, you can always use depth as a receiver. We lost 
two good receivers this year. And I think we lost another backup receiver. So we can always. So for me, um, I would say corner, safety, D tackle, left guard, left tackle. Do you do you all get a quarterback this draft? No, it, I don't think no. we take a quarterback this year. I don't think we take a quarterback. I think uh, I think we are pretty content right now with our backup quarterback situation. Um, they'll always, I think they'll always take a quarterback with the uh, complimentary picks, um, just to bring some guys in, get some tape, see if you know, see who works out for practice squad. Um, if they don't keep the the whatever guys that they already had on practice squad. Uh, this previous year, um, but I don't see us taking a, a quarterback in the uh, first four rounds at all. When, when it comes to Jerry and, and Steven, like, they usually go best player available most of the time. Exactly. Um, and they usually go for a good flash, like something to actually talk about. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm kind of looking for uh, from them. Yeah. And hopefully they give us a show. So, um, I do appreciate. <laughs> Jerry said he. Jerry said he wouldn't mind uh, moving up in the draft. So we never know. Somebody might get traded. We might move up. Jerry. Jerry ain't never afraid to work out a deal. Do you, you think it's I mean? anybody that he act? Do you think it's anybody like you said? Do you think it's anybody that he would do that for? Like, is it a guy that's been talked about in in Cowboy Land where if it's looking kind of shady, he might not fall that Jerry and make a move to go up? Uh, I haven't heard any rumblings, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like everybody else. I'm just sitting and waiting till Thursday night and uh, see what happens. See what happens. All right, that's my man, Chris. Um, hopefully it'll get you on sometime, maybe after the draft, after y'all pick, get you to come on. Uh, we're gonna try to, to to do some live streaming and uh, raise on in the lab. So you know, up until the pick, when the pick is about to be made or before. You know, if you're not too busy, I'll hit you up, see if you can come on and join us real quick with your, you know, uh, initial reaction to the yeah, to the yeah, pick. for sure. Um, for sure. Appreciate so, you for having me. All right. That's, uh, appreciate you, Chris, man. That's my Cowboy correspondent, man. Appreciate you. There's a lot of bad stigma about shopping for a used car. Well, come visit us at iCargo Motors. We'll take care of you. We'll ensure that your experience is not only seamless and efficient, but also satisfying. Because at iCargo Motors, we believe that the best form of currency is integrity. Come back to Red Dose in the lab with Deuce. It's draft time. Who you got? We're back, Red Zone in the Lab podcast. We're continuing our NFL draft week. We have our Baltimore Ravens correspondent. Mike Evans is in the building. Uh, how you doing today, man? I appreciate you joining us. See you back at work again. You know, jumping on a podcast, man. We really appreciate you taking this time with us. It's always a pleasure, bro. Um, what's the state of the Ravens? Like, what what does it look like up there right now? Um, yeah, you know, every every year is a uh, Super Bowl or bust, man. Like I say, uh, all we have to do is just get some, you know, quality quality depth. We got a lot of our starters returning from injured reserve. You know, um, this is Super Bowl or bust, man. You know, we, we can't we can't fall short of anything. Not this year. Yeah, with Lamar Jackson, it's former MVP. That's what it is. It's not about getting into the playoffs, winning a game or two. It's about competing and contending for the Super Bowl. I mean, to some people, he is, you know, in their top five. He's definitely top ten. So there th- that's where the expectation is. But to me, it just don't seem like he has that pressure on him. The guy, he just he doesn't look like he's pressured. Um, but as a Ravens fan, I mean, you follow him more than I do. Does is he is 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 he masking it? Do you think there's pressure somewhere underneath there? No, not at all. He he that guy, he came in with a chip on his shoulder. He's always had a chip on his shoulder. So uh yeah, I think the pressure is more so with the people around him to help him get to the promised land. You know? Yeah, you good. The yeah, I think land. he 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 yeah, he's cool as a cucumber, man. He, uh, I, he doesn't he doesn't get rattled, man. Like Lamar is still gonna be Lamar. He's out there doing charity events and everything. He's definitely gonna be Lamar, man. He not a not a not a <laughs> not a worry in his body. Don't seem like, bro. 
why do they why do they why do how can i how can i how can i how can i frame this greg roman what does he have what does he mean to that organization because he, he seems very stubborn um and he's just not it just, it just doesn't seem like he's building that or, or scheming to Lamar's strength it just seems like he won't come out of himself is this a, a a make or fire year from him or is this or does he have skeletons on Harbaugh like what is it going to take for him to actually start using Lamar to his strengths yeah I, I think this is definitely a, a a make or fire year man like he's definitely on the hot seat and I, I think they brought him back this year based on you know because we had a lot of a lot of our starters out, you know, we had two running backs out, you know, then Lamar went down at the end of the season. We didn't get Bateman in until six games in, you know, so I'm, I'm thinking that they're, you know, they're looking at them as far as like what we did to Cam Cameron and, and, and Mark Trestman, you know, he, if everything's not shaping up in the beginning of the season, then somewhere along the line, he's going to get chopped. Yeah, man. It, it's <laughs> some have, some have to give, um, and if you think about it, that may be a reason why Lamar is kind of loafing on his contract, you know, exactly. to see w- what are they willing to do for him? You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, I think him and Harbaugh's relationship is real good, but long as Greg Rome is there's like, it's this, 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 this hedge between him and really maximizing who Lamar really is. But right. I'm, I'm looking forward to this year. I'm looking forward to the ba- bounce back year for Lamar and for the Ravens. You had a lot of injuries and I- I'm looking forward to, for y'all to do great things and him to get back in that best quarterback conversation this year. How s- are you satisfied with the off season so far? Let's, let's, let's start there. Are, are you satisfied with the off season so far? Um, yeah, I mean, as, as far as I'm concerned, we sure we showed up the defensive backfield, you know, with Marcus Williams from uh, from New Orleans, you know, um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty I'm I'm pretty satisfied thus far. I mean, we we have been, you know, our names have been mentioned in a couple trade talks, mm-hmm. you know, but um, we we really don't know until Eric DaCosta pulls the trigger. But I'm I'm as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, with the the Darius Smith thing, you know, that, that went out the window. So hopefully, you know, post June 1st, we can get some quality veterans in here, mm-hmm. you know, after the draft, just to see where we're at, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess we'll just take it from there, but yeah, so far, so far, so good for Eric DaCosta. What about the 14th pick? What would you do if everything failed exactly the way you wanted it to fall? And what do you think the cost is going to do with the 14th pick? Um, I, honestly, DaCosta is known to trade back. He normally doesn't stay in a spot, you know, to pick. It depends on how his big board goes. Um, but at the 14th pick, I would, I would take, you know, I would take uh, Trevor Penning out of, um, you, you know, the offensive tackle. That guy, mm-hmm. you know, he's, he's a mauler, you know, mm-hmm. and that, that's, something, that's something that we need, you know, because we're not really sure about Ronnie Stanley. I mean, they say he's going to be good for this season, for this upcoming season, but you really don't know. He came back last year a little too early, played one game, then he was out again. So, you know, um, yeah, with that 14 pick, I would I would go after Trevor Penning. That sounds good. You need some protection for Lamar. Um, that's kind of been an issue over the years. Uh, right. What makes Lamar look like a scrambling quarterback It's not because he chooses to, it's just because that the, the, the protection breaks the protection down. breaks down, yeah. Um, you know, two, three seconds, the protection breaks down. So he has to use um, his legs. So what about the rest of the draft? What are, what are some things uh, or what are some positions of need, maybe starter caliber, maybe depth that you would like to, to, to add in free agency with, with, with young guys? Um, well, I, I'm looking more so, like I said, with edge rushes, rushes because we really haven't had a, 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 someone to set the edge you know, since Terrell Suggs. So we need we need edge rushers. Um, that's that's pretty much number one on the list. And then offensive linemen. You know, I know it sounds funny because I said we take take Trevor Penny, you know, at 14th. But mm. um, you know, pretty much um, the other edge rushers that that you know are high quality. They seem like they're going 
from between one and 10. So we really kind of, you know, we really kind of look, um, don't look so good on the edge rushing scene. But, you know, we do have a lot of good edge rushes that can be taken later on. Uh, uh, Nick Benito, he, uh, he's a good edge rusher. We can, we can use him. Um, we definitely need to, to add some depth to the defensive backfield as far as corner. Like I said, mm -hmm. we lost two of our corners, uh, the free agency. You know, they went on and signed uh, contracts elsewhere. Uh, Tavon Young went to the to the Bears, and, and uh, Anthony Avery, he went to the Raiders. So we definitely need to show up that defensive backfield. Defensive linemen, we definitely need defensive linemen also, like uh, big interior defensive linemen. Uh, you know, Calais Campbell, uh, we don't know if he's covered back or if he's mm – -hmm what he's going to do, you know, um, but we still have Derek Wolf. Derek Wolf has been, you know, injury prone since he was in Denver, really. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we pretty much need some, some more young, young guys uh, on that defensive line. Um, everything else um, is, is, is not really plug and play, but actually for depth is like as far as the inside linebacker, you know, so. I'm looking forward to this draft to see what Eric DeCoste is going to do. Is there one guy in the draft that you want, like regardless of how it falls out or if he, if you all have to trade up to get him? Like, is there a guy that will that you want? And regard, it could be best player available. It can be like somebody that can come straight in and start somewhere where you're weak. Who's that one guy for you in this draft? Um, for me. Um, it would be the edge rusher from Georgia. Um, uh, what's his name? I forget his name. But um, this guy, he, you know, he he got a motor. Like he's always around the ball. I was just looking at highlights early, and this guy ran down a wide receiver. So you know, big foot, big four five speed, six foot five. You know, two hundred seventy pounds. Definitely somebody I would love to see drop to us. But you know, they talk about maybe he go first. Instead of Aiden Hutchinson, who knows? I don't know, but that's yeah, what I would like Trey, to see. Trayvon, they, they, a couple, a couple uh, mocks have him going first. Uh, Trayvon Walker, yeah, yeah, man, that, Trayvon he, Walker, he's, that's yeah, thing. he, he, he's, he, he's going. I think he's going to be a menace. I think Jordan Davis is going to be a menace. Yeah, I'm talking about replacing yeah. with you know you all used to be known for that nose tackle, you know Huliada, exactly. Huliada, and somebody like Jordan Davis for I me. Mean, he might be tempting also. Um, yeah. 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 So let's, let's, um, um, appreciate you coming on, Mike, joining us again. Like I said, our Baltimore Ravens correspondent. Looking forward to the draft. Um, hopefully, around when you all make your pick, um, we're looking to, the, to, to go live stream this Thursday for the draft. Um, I can get you, you know, maybe text you, get your call, see if you got two minutes to get your initial reaction. When it's happening, if you're able to, you know, come on. But again, we do appreciate you coming on, taking the time to join us. Yeah, that's cool, man. I appreciate you having me on again, man. And like I said, man, you you have a have a good day and this podcast, man. It, it hit hard, man. You know, I'll be looking at it. <laughs> I'll be looking that. at it a lot, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> that's Ray Zone in the Lab podcast. One beat, one sound, one heart, one love. Thank you for listening to Red Zone in the Lab podcast. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Red Zone in the Lab. And you can download our podcast at Spotify, iTunes, and Podbean. And please visit our website at redzoneinthelab.com. Thank you. We're back. Welcome back to Red Zone in the Lab with Deuce.